This is video 3 for exercise 24, Elements of Design. And I have just formatted each one of these side headings. So you can have a look. Yours should look like this. And just move to, so there's page 1. There's page 2, just so you know, uh, with this side heading format or paragraph style applied, I did end up with overset text here, which I needed to thread to the next frame there. And uh, at this point, we are going to go back to page 1 and work on this section in the second column, six types of lines. So the first thing is, uh, the exercise as us format these. I'm not sure why we don't do a paragraph style, but we're just going to go with this. So, first thing is just separate these. And the numbers will be redundant if we are to format these as a numbered list. So, I'm going to remove them. And next, I will highlight them. And then I'm going to go up to the paragraph formatting and find the numbered list, which is right here. And click there. And set the left indent to point four three seven five enter so move them over a little bit okay and I'll control minus and right now this is what your page one should look like okay actually I see but I have missed formatting this one right here. Practical use of lines. So I'm going to go and get my paragraph styles. Just add that on. I think I have. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is place an image underneath this list. So I'm going to click off and control D, follow the path. I'm just going to come up here. So I'm in design elements of design, images, and line patterns. So it's this one right here. So I'll open that and then I'm going to drag out the rectangle below here. And I need to, uh, you can see this is a graphic and the text is going right underneath. So I need to apply this jump object text wrap so that the entire text jumps right across. There's no wrapping around the bounding box. It pushes it all down. And then I'm going to rotate this and I, when I put my select tool near there, press my shift key, that will constrain it to 90 degrees. And then I just used my nudge key there a little bit to bring it back. And I can see that I can fine tune this a little bit. And I want to move it down a little bit. Actually, I want to move it up a little bit. Oh, see? 
I've I've now lost my I need to click right on the edge here and I'm just going to nudge it with my keys because that's what I'm looking for. I want this to go down below and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here because I ultimately we want this uh, to go forward and you can see I've just done the same thing where I have sized the frame only so control shift and then use the handle and at this point we will go to effects object effects put a drop shadow on there and we want we'll just leave it at the default and put a one point stroke on there and we want to force this last little bit of text so we're going to click down here I'll double click and get my cursor just to the left of the P and I'm going to force a page break by clicking on the menu type insert break character page break and now you can see that what was there has been forced to the next page here. Okay, and I think I'm, it might look a little bit big to me, so I'm going to control shift and just make it a little bit, just a little bit smaller. Okay, and so now, at this point, we're ready to work just on page 2 and 3. So, we've got practical use of lines at the top of column 1 on page 2. I'm taking a look in your handout to see what I am working towards, and I can see I have three more images to place. Okay, so page two, placement of three images. So page two, column one. So underneath this section, practical use of lines, we want to place a file. So control D. It's going to be the use of lines right there. JPEG, not the PDF. And I am going to put it right here. It goes after this paragraph, the second paragraph. So I'll pull that in. I need to set my text wrap to jump object. I need to put my drop shadow and my one point stroke I might like to just know, nudge that down a tiny little bit and then I have another image to put right above this and I think I'm going to control shift to make this one a little bit smaller just to make sure I have enough room for this one and I'm going to move it over the center like it is shown on my on my handout okay control D go and get the coupon coupon open it's going to go right at the end of the practical use for lines so click hold drag that out put the jump object perfect sends this right up to the next column 
and it's still selected. Put my effect, drop shadow, and one point. And now I'm going to place, actually I can see I have some overset text here. Now I might want to add a little bit of offset here. Uh, just to push this down a little bit uh, because I don't want to put blank lines in there ever. But here, I'm going to just, you can see, that's add a little bit of space there. And maybe put it on the top. But again, I like the wrap I have. So right now, it just impacted that. So I'll pull it down. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so I have the last image to come in for this exercise. Comes in right. I'm going to click off, move over here. I can see that I have overset text now, so I need to click on that once, twice, get my white arrow, and click. There's not much here. So this finishes it off. Go and place the last picture, which is logos using lines. That one. And put it in here. Add my drop shadow. And add my point. And that's, that's all she wrote. Yay!